Shout out to Ender Shadow on Twitter for using my code on G Fuel's website. If you guys are interested in doing the same, check the link in the description as it goes a long way to support the channel. Thank you. It feels like with everything going on as of late between reliable Destiny leakers to Bungie dropping a ton of subtle hints in the most recent TWAB, Solar 3.0 is all but confirmed to be dropping next season. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna look like an idiot. But aside from that, that's why I wanted to sit down today and talk with you all about the top must-have PvE solar weapons for Solar 3.0. If Void 3.0 or the Stasis subclass is anything to go off of, Bungie is steering Destiny in a direction where weapon element and subclass element go hand in hand. We've seen that design philosophy so much as of late that I figured it couldn't hurt to make a guide on what solar weapons to get before the subclass gets reworked. Now as usual, I'll be going over these weapons one by one, talking about how to get them, what their god rolls are, if they're not exotic, and all that jazz. With all that said, if you enjoyed the video today and would like to see more from me, consider liking and subscribing to the channel as it would make me feel really warm and fuzzy on the inside. And without further ado, let's jump into this. Now kicking off today's video, I figured there was no way I could cover Solar 3.0 weapons and not talk about the Vex Mythic class first. This auto rifle and fusion rifle hybrid comes from the Vault of Glass and has been a long standing favorite among many in the community since its initial buff in Season of the Lost. With its catalyst giving it the ability to ramp up damage and its main perk allowing it to swap from full auto to a linear mode for burst DPS, there's no wondering why this weapon is so popular. Even now, before Solar 3.0, this weapon absolutely melts anything and everything that moves, especially if you pair it with something like Path of the Burning Steps on Titan, and also combine that, or just use this with other classes, Elemental Well builds, and you can just go crazy with this thing. I fully expect it to transcend all barriers come next season, because it's already low-key meta right now. Now up next from Vex, we have ourselves a fan favorite that hasn't been in the loot pool in the longest of time up until this season, and that is the Summoner. Luckily, I was able to bag me one way back in the day, but that's besides the point, subtle flex. This 600 RPM auto comes from Trials of Osiris, and it's just a phenomenal feeling weapon overall. With perks like Overflow and Focus Fury for GM content or Overflow Rampage for casual, there's a little something for everybody. Golden Tricorn also makes an appearance on this weapon, which could be a key perk going into next season depending on how ability reliant the solar subclasses become. Now while speaking on the summoner, I know that the Overflow Focus Fury role isn't exactly the best thing for endgame, so I want to bring up a personal favorite of mine, the 720 RPM Arctic Haze from Europa, as it feels like this thing is built from the ground up to just be used in master content. This weapon can roll with either triple tap or subsistence combined with Vorpal, and it makes it a fantastic pick for any time you're needing to deal with champions or pop solar shields in match game. This is normally my go-to endgame auto rifle, while I mainly use some for anything that's casual. Now we've been talking about primary weapons only up until this point so let's shake things up and discuss two of my favorite special weapons, the Empty Vessel and the Explosive Personality. Different strokes for different folks is the name of the game here regarding these two GLs. If you're more of a breach light guy, then you'll find the Empty Vessel in the Strike playlist or from Zavala's Rank Up Engrams, and it can get absolute insane perks for just pure carnage and damage dealing. Given how with these subclass reworks we're mainly going for kills, I'm not exactly going to recommend a blinding nade build for this weapon. You're mainly going to want to go with like Lead from Gold, Ambitious Assassin, and Field Prep in that first column, with Multi Kill Clip, a Vorpal demo and one for all in the second to just maximize your carnage. And if you're someone that likes the whole waveframe GL thing, Explosive Personality is a craftable weapon from the new Battlegrounds and can get great reload and ammo perks in the first column with a mix of either utility or damage in the second. It also has the added benefit of the land tank origin trait, but both of these weapons are great and definitely worth a mention. Segwaying on back over to primaries, let's talk about two of my all-time favorites in the game. We have the BXR Battler and the Agma Balls PR6. Starting off the BXR, this is a free-to-play friendly weapon from Dares. It can roll with Outlaw or Demo in the first column and Kill Clip or Adrenaline in the second. 
Moving on to Ogma, this weapon is also free to play friendly, but unfortunately comes from the world loot pool, making it a bit harder to get a god roll of. The upside of this though is that it does have a lot of perks to choose from, so you're almost guaranteed to get a good one. You got stats for all, one for all, demo adrenaline, demo wellspring, adaptive one for all, just a ton of great stuff here on this pulse rifle, and just like the BXR, you'll notice that they're very centered around abilities and damage at the same time due to their perk sets and where they're positioned. Both of these weapons are absolute favorites of mine, and I have big expectations to see them both do really well whenever Solar 3.0 drops. Now, moving on from there, I'm gonna need you guys to hear me out, okay? Just, just, just hear me out, don't scream at me, just hear me out. Let's talk about scout rifles real quick, and I want to start off with, dare I say it, the Skyburner's Oath. Now, 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 first off, enjoy the gameplay in the background of me and the boys doing a Grandmaster with Skyburners only. And second, the TWAB was gassing this weapon up in regards to some major reworks it has coming its way, and I'm genuinely excited to see how it pans out. Now, Skyburners is getting hit scan bullets when ADS, a large bullet blast radius when hip firing, bonus reload speed from the masterwork, the highest in-air accuracy of any weapon, and finally, the shots that you fire from the hip will apply burn damage to the targets they hit. La Monarch 2.0? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Sounds pretty lit, okay? I like the sound of this thing. I really want to see a Skyburners meta. I think it'll be hilarious. Now, aside from that, the other recommendation I want to make here for scouts is, of course, the ever underrated Vision of Confluence from the Vault of Glass. It's one of the few weapons that rolls Wellspring in the first column. You can pair that with Kill Clip, Disruption Break, or Frenzy. An absolute gem of a weapon. Not nearly enough people talk about it. It's one of my favorites, and I always got to bring it up when relevant. Now, going back to the idea of the recent TWAB making Skyburners better, let's talk about a heavy weapon that's also getting buffs in the near future, the Hezen Vengeance. Now, with Hezen, this is a Vault of Glass rocket launcher, and it's about to see a massive resurgence in the meta, thanks to how Bungie is choosing to balance rockets going forward. You know how everyone is just using Palmyra at the moment due to tracking rockets, and the damage difference just not being that big between all the archetypes? Well now, when compared to something like Hezen, Palmyra will now intrinsically do 20% less damage as it got a 10% nerf and the Hezen archetype got a 10% buff. Looks like overflow and lasting impressions back on the menu, I'm just saying. You also got like auto loading and impulse amplifier, good perks good perks, good rocket. Um, also, just to quickly butt in while we're talking about heavy weapons, we of course also have the Cataclysmic from Vow of the Disciple. Don't want to forget this bad boy. Fourth time's a charm. Focus Fury, just really good for raid damage. If you're sleeping on this thing, then I don't know, drink some G Fuel, wake up. It, it's an absolute great weapon. Now, we haven't talked about exotics in a bit, so let's go ahead and fix that. Sunshot is up next on the menu, and hot damn, have I just never stopped loving this weapon. I mean, without even taking into account it potentially getting better next season, currently it's a 150 RPM hand cannon, it has explosive rounds, intrinsic firefly for just all the kills that you get, and it just has crack stats across the board. This is by far my favorite weapon to pair with an elemental well build because of just how many explosive kills you can chain together for really easy wells and damage buffs. It's just a regular world loot exotic so anybody can get their hands on it, and I highly recommend recommend keeping an eye out for it alongside the Vex for next season. Now while we're on the topic hand cannons, definitely can't forget to mention the annual skate. This was a world loot weapon for about 6 months back during Lost, and the gunsmith sold its god roll I believe 2 times during that period, so I'm sure most of you already have one, but I want to talk about it anyways. Triple tap time payload, just fantastic, and with solar hand cannons just lacking across the board in the legendary category, annual skate is an immediate top pick in my opinion. Moving on, let's talk about heavy weapons once again, but this time my favorite category, machine guns. Now let's kick things off with Archon's Thunder. I know, definitely wasn't expecting this one, right? This Iron Banner machine gun really isn't that kind of weapon that comes to mind when you think of a good weapon, but I got the god roll of this recently and I've just been loving it in GM content. Field prep and rampage go astronomically hard on this thing. You guys know, not a big rampage guy, but rampage on machine guns is where it shines, 100%. At least in master content. You know, rampage is always good in casual content. You're running master content though, where it's really hard to kill the enemies. Machine guns, they just get the job done, right? And 
and Archon's Thunder definitely gets the job done, but machine guns are getting buffed again. I don't know if you guys saw my last video. They're getting a huge buff. This weapon is just going to shred through enemies even easier than it already does, not to mention the potential Solar 3.0 synergies. Just make sure you have field prep on this thing for really fast reload, tons of reserves, and rampage for just even more damage. An absolute gem of a machine gun. The other machine gun I want to mention is, of course, the previous king of mediocrity that really died off after its nerf, and that's the Xenophage, because hot damn, it's getting its rate of fire back, and I couldn't be happier. And, you know, I don't really see myself using Xeno that much, personally, but I'm just glad the old Xeno is back, and I figured out though in the video. Now, moving on from Xeno, let's cover back-to-back -back exotics. Let's talk about Terabo right quick. This weapon has gotten through the exotic weapon kiosk and the tower for spoils, and just like Sunshot and Vex, it's just another primary to keep your eyes out for. Terabo is already coming off of both the 40% buff to damage uh, for primary exotics and the patch which made Ravenous Beast easier to activate. So now with the next season, we're looking to get Solar 3.0, so there's really no telling how much better this SMG is about to get. And of course, we also have a legendary recommendation here if you're not big on exotic primaries. Here we have the Borrowed Time. Now the Borrowed Time comes from Gambit, and if you can get over its atrociously low magazine size, it actually packs a pretty major punch with how good of a perk selection it has from what you can see here. It's focus farmable now as well thanks to the Gambit rework, so hey, if you like 750s with good perks and can overlook the mag size, this is 100% a weapon to look out for. Up next from Borrow Time, let's talk about combat bows for a second because here we have the Tiku's Divination and the Tyranny of Heaven, the only solar bows in the entire game right now. Now Tiku's needs no introduction, this weapon is your heat seeking, explodey boy of a combat bow, basically the Le Monarch of the solar element right now. And Tyranny of Heaven is the legendary sidekick of Tiku's and it's going to be rocking your usual archer's tempo and explosive head god roll. Nothing really too crazy to see here, just two bows that you pretty much want to make sure you have your hands on because they seem to get champion mods all the time. Now finally for the last weapon of the video, and most unfortunately, it's one that isn't obtainable anymore, we have the Sola Scar from Trials of Osiris. By far, my favorite sword in the entire game, no contest. This weapon flings fiery onion rings of death that chain react and explode all nearby enemies. I'm really hoping that Solar 3.0 brings some really crazy synergy here, because chain reaction on a caster frame is just dumb fun as is, and I'd low-key like to see it push deep into the meta territory in the future. Check your vaults, people. Make sure you got your Solar Scar at the ready just in case. And if you don't have the sword, I'm sure some people will leave an F in the comments for you, our fallen comrades. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. We went over around 20 different Solar Legendary to Exotic weapons that you should pick up in anticipation for the Solar 3.0 rework supposedly coming next season. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and if there's anything I missed, definitely feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you to my patrons as always for their financial support, and shout out to my tier 2 patrons, Homebase Serenity, Onrock, Crunchtrap, Admus, Vile, and John, as well as my tier 3s, Neon, Cinco, Austin, and Galumia. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.